Right, so hello. As you probably have noticed from the title, I'm going to do the classic book tag. And I know this tag is like a hundred years old, but I love classics and I love talking about classics. And through that tag, I have found a lot of booktubers who love classics. So here I am. I will try to keep my answers short because I can talk about classics for hours. So. Let's start. The first question. An overhyped classics you really didn't like? I have two. First is Far From the Madding Crowd, as the second is a very common answer, which is Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is the Polish edition. Both of those books actually are just far too melodramatic for me. And personally, if the plot is more on the melodramatic side, I need it to be kind of undercut with some humor or like self-awareness for it to work for me so <laughs> this just ain't it okay second question favorite time period to read about i will not be original here the whole like 19th century is just my favorite time period to read books from uh, i mean come on you have not only like jane austen you have the bronte sisters you have oscar wilde tolstoy dostoevsky Dickens, Ex Alexander Dumas, like so, uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, George Eliot, so many amazing writers, so the whole 19th century is just my favorite. Okay, third question. I'm looking at my laptop, by the way. I know this might look weird, but I have the questions here. The first question is favorite fairy tale, and in my notes I just wrote, nope. Even in my childhood, I never really liked fairy tales because like, I feel like a lot of children don't notice it when they're children, but fairy tales tend to be kind of like dark and also melodramatic, like coming back to my first like question. And I just, I guess even when I was a child, I was just like, I don't have time for that drama. Like my childhood favorites were Winnie the Pooh and Paddington Bear. I just don't have the time for the drama of fairy tales. I just want to read about overly polite bears that don't like to wear pants and have a sweet tooth. Like, <laughs> sue me. Okay, first question. What's the most embarrassing... What's the most embarrassed classic you haven't read yet? So, I have three... I have to say, normally I would say that like, oh, I'm not embarrassed to that I haven't read any classics. Like, I don't, I don't like genuinely. I don't like the attitude of, of some people. That it's just like, oh, you haven't read that. Like, come on. But there's one that I'm genuinely embarrassed that I haven't read yet, and that is Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. It's going to happen. It has to happen this year because. My number one goal for 2020 was to read more Russian classics and I have not read any Russian classics this year, so... Also, The Count of Monte Cristo by... I do not know how to pronounce his name... Alexandre Dumas? I don't know. And also Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. So, as you can see, it's mostly like non-English classics, like not from England or like America. Now that I'm thinking about it, my goal for this year was to read more Russian classics and I still have like four months left I'm, left, I'm going to do it. Maybe for next year my goal should be to read more French classics. I feel like my goal should be to read more like non-English classics like overall, yeah. Okay, so question number five, top five classics you would like to read soon. So I have five prepared for you and then another five. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I, I'll try to like go for them very quickly. So I had to take a quick break so the angle might have changed. But the first book I want to read is Anna Karenina. I do not own that book yet, which is an obstacle I have to overcome if I want to read it. <laughs> but there is a specific edition that I would like to get it in. And I would like to actually read it in Polish because I feel like Russian is closer to Polish. So than, it, than to English, so I'd rather read a Polish translation. And this is actually the edition. And this is actually the edition that I would like to collect it in. I really like how the spine looks, and it has like gold edges only on top, though. I don't know why, but yeah, it's really nice. But it's really expensive, so I'm looking to buy it in a reasonable price. And I have not found a good offer yet. <laughs> So we might as well actually talk about the second book that I would like to read soon-ish, which is Brother Karamazov by Dostoevsky. 
I have two volumes right here, so. I also would like to read The Age of Innocence by Eddie Wharton. I have read The House of Mirth this year and it's probably the best book I have read this year. So I'm really excited to read The Age of Innocence, but I also don't own it yet. <laughs> Next we have The Woman in White by Wilk Collins. I would like to read it during Victober, so in October. It's kind of chunky though. Ugh, how many pages is it? Oh, over 700 pages, so it's gonna take a second. Then we have A Tale, The Tale, A Tale, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I've read Great Expectations and The Christmas Carol, and they are both kind of like fine, but I don't think Charles Dickens' writing style is really like up my alley, but I'm going to give him another chance and I'm going to read the Tale of Two Cities. So next one is kind of a modern classic, but I know, I included it, so I would also like to read Beloved by Toni Morrison. I would also like to read The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. You know those authors you haven't read yet, but you just have a feeling you're going to like their books? That's me with Anthony Trollope, so. I would also like to read Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I don't know French, I'm so sorry, I'm butchering every single name that's in French, so. I think there, there's, there's going to be read-along uh, with Lucy, the reader? What's her name? Oh, I forgot. But yeah, it's going... I feel like read-along for this book is going to be either in October or November, so that's when I'm going to read it. Lastly, I have written We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I would like to read a little bit more horror in the future, and, you know, Shirley Jackson is like a classic author when it comes to horror, so I'm very excited. Then we have favorite modern book slash series based on a classic. Uh, I've read, I've heard some amazing things about Longburn by Joe Baker, but I haven't actually read it yet. But this year I have read The Other Bennett Sister. Wait, who wrote it? I don't remember. It will be on the screen. <laughs> and it was great. It's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but told from Mary's perspective. I liked the first half a lot more than the second can half, but I still gave it 4.5 stars and I would still very much recommend it. Then we have question number 7, which is favorite movie version slash TV series based on a classic. So obviously we have the North and South adaptation from 2004. I think it's a mini series. Yeah, it's amazing. This is one of those cases where I liked the adaptation a little bit more than the book, but both are really good. Also the same case is with Morris, the 1987 adaptation directed by James Ivory, who is like my favorite director ever, probably. Like James Ivory just understands Ian Forster like no one else does. And this adaptation actually includes something that wasn't included in the book, but I think it makes the story better because I had a problem with the story because I felt like some characters' actions at some point kind of changed and like kind of the, their thought process changed and I was like, I don't really understand why that happened and they kind of explored that a little bit more in the movie, so. That was amazing. Also, like, that movie includes Hugh Grant with fluffy hair and oversized sweaters. Like, what else do you need? <laughs> Obviously, we have Pride and Prejudice 1995 miniseries. Yes, it is superior to the movie. I will not be taking any criticism. Also, Persuasion from 1995. I will be talking about a different adaptation of Persuasion soon. But the 1995 is a miniseries also? I think so. Yeah, I think it is. That's also a really great adaptation. And lastly, we have Much Ado About Nothing, the 1993 adaptation directed by... Oh, Kevin... What was his name? Jesus. Yeah, that was really good. I actually also like this more than I like the play. I mean, the cast is amazing. There is a scene at the very beginning where the cast of male characters, like main male characters, are riding in like slow motion on horses and it's just hilarious. Yeah, it was really it was a really good adaptation. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Emma Thompson, I think she really suited that role. Then we have obviously worst classic to movie adaptation. So from one movie directed directed by Kenneth Branagh? What, what how do you pronounce that name? 
to another. Murder on the Ex Orient Express from 2017 is easily the worst movie I have ever seen. Like, the worst adaptation I ever ever seen, for, for sure. Like, I gave it 2 out of 10 stars on IMDb and I have never given a movie such a low rating. It was... I didn't give it 1 star because visually it was pretty. I like the costumes. But like, everything else, garbage. Don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, Mansfield Park from 1999 is also terrible. <laughs> so. For some reason, in the movie, they combined Fanny, the main character from Mansfield Park, with Jane Austen herself, and like, it was so weird because they made Fanny not really shy, more like, you know, outspoken, kind of rebellious, and I was like, what is this? How is this adaptation of Mansfield Park? So, yeah, that was not good. Then we have Emma from 1996, uh, so the one with Gwyneth Paltrow. I haven't watched a lot of movies with Gwyneth Paltrow in it, but her acting in Emma was probably the worst acting I've ever seen. Every time she opened her mouth, I was like, oh my god, please stop. So, that was bad. In the, on the other hand, the Emma adaptation with Arthur Lee Miller, the miniseries, is actually really good. And lastly, we have Persuasion from 2007, so not the one from 1995 but 2007. I thought it started out okay, but then it kind of went downhill <laughs> and like hit absolute rock bottom with the last scene. I was like watching the last scene and just screaming. <laughs> Question number nine is favorite editions you'd like to collect more classics from? Um, that's a hard one because I do really like the Penguin English Library editions because they're, I like the font, I, they're not nice and floppy, they're easy to read, but I think I own most of the books that I would like to own in this edition, because I'm slowly moving to more obscure classics, and because I've read most of the like big titles. So I think I'm going to collect more of the Penguin Black Spine, what, what's it called? I think it's called Penguin Black Classics. Yeah, those are nice. Uh, the cover tends to like kind of rub, not rub off, but like, yeah, it gets damaged easily, but I do like the font. I think it's easy to read. And there's a lot of books that, uh, that I would like to read that are in this edition. And lastly, we have an underhyped classics you'd recommend to anyone. To everyone. To everyone. And that is a hard question because like, how do you define an under-hyped classic? Like, if it's a classic, can it be under-hyped? I don't know. So, my strategy here is more like, kind of, compared to something, I think this is under-hyped. So, compared to other Bronte sisters, Anne is not famous enough. The Tenant of Whitefell Hall, I think I like even more than Jane Eyre. So, I think the Tenant of Whitefell Hall is underhyped, and if you haven't read it, you absolutely should. Then we have The House of Murph, because I guess her most well-known book would be The Age of Innocence. Uh, it's by Eddie Fortin, by the way. I haven't read The Age of Innocence, but I would like to see more people reading The House of Murph, because it's my favorite book of 2020 so far. Next we have a Shakespeare play, and it's kind of hard to say, you know, a Shakespeare play is underhyped, but Compared to his other plays, I think As You Like It is really funny it's comedy. Basically, it's mostly about Princess Rosalind and her friend Celia, and they have to go into exile because, you know, the king goes mad, as he always does. Rosalind has to pretend to be a boy, a guy, um, because it would be easier for them to survive because they uh, go into some kind of forest, forest of Arden, and yeah, she pretends to be a guy, drama ensues, it's so funny, it's entertaining, if you haven't read it yet, I definitely would recommend it. And lastly we have Lady Windermere's Fan by Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde wrote a lot of plays, the importance of being earnest is, I guess, the most famous one. He has written a lot of plays, uh, mostly comedic ones. There's one play that's like more on the dramatic side, and it's Salome. I wouldn't recommend it, but like the rest is great. Personally, I like Lady Windermere's fan, but like 
I don't think you could go wrong with like a woman of no importance of our an ideal husband. They're all really funny. I have not given except for Salome, so far I have not given any Oscar Wilde's play anything lower than a four star. So that's it. I'm actually preparing a video about <laughs> different editions of classics and I'm really excited about it, so I hope you'll enjoy it too. That's all I have for you today and see you next time. Bye!